Hello, everybody. Welcome to Disabilities Redefined with Dr. Wagner. I am yours truly, Dr. Truett Wagner, and as always, very, very happy to be here. Today, we have Robert Thornton, the CEO and President of Paper Clouds Apparel, which is a very innovative, very creative, and very, very new t-shirt company that is making waves in the field of, um, well, fashion, and uh, as well as bringing awareness to disabilities. Hello, Robert. Hello, thank you so much for having me on. I am, I'm so excited to be here and, and let all of, your, all of your fans and followers know about, about what we're doing here at Paper Clouds Apparel and how we're focused on helping the special needs community. Well, thank you very much. And as you see, I'm wearing the t-shirt uh, well, I don't know if you can see it or well, you can't see it, but they can see it out there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, let's get into it and see what you have to say. Paper Clouds Apparel. First of all, what is it and what is the main mission? I was visiting my parents who were living in uh, Northern California at the time and went to get something from the fridge and there was a drawing hanging on the fridge. And we don't, there's no like grandchildren running around my parents' house. And I could see that it was definitely drawn by, you know, what I thought was a child and asked my mom about it. And she had just taken a job as a bus driver for children with special needs and had a little girl on her bus route. Wow. Was, as soon as my mom would get her, you know, buckled in, she would just draw on her whole entire drive to school and sometimes give those drawings to my mom. And that's what it was. And I, I spent the whole entire night. You know, when, when the family was watching TV, I was still, you know, looking at this drawing because the uh, the characters, they were different in a way that I just thought was so cool, you know, mm -hmm. and went to bed that night and I had put it on the on the nightstand, woke up the next morning and I looked at it again. And it was almost like when you watch a cartoon mm -hmm. and you see when the cartoon character has an idea and like the light bulb lights up, it was literally like one of those moments where I looked at this drawing again and all of a sudden I was like, man, these drawings would look super cool on t-shirts. And I'd always been like a t-shirt junkie. Mm -hmm. and it was just like, it hit me right there. And I, I, I ran right downstairs and I told my mom, you know, what I was going to do. I was like, mom, I'm going to take artwork, you know, created by those with special needs and put it on t-shirts and help raise money for them. And then I'll, I'll, I'll have them fold and package our shirts and we'll create jobs for them. And like my, my mom's the best person who's ever walked the face of the planet. And so She's always just so encouraging, and so she was like, "Do it," you know. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, "Do it," <laughs> but the the problem was, you know, I mean, my mom was a bus driver for kids with special needs. My dad was a foreman for a road construction company, so it wasn't like I could just be like, "Hey, do you guys have like fifty to seventy five thousand dollars so I can start my business?" You know, and <laughs> I didn't have that option. And I also knew that if I went into a bank and talked to their, you know, loan department. You know, I'm sure their loan officer would be like, wow, that's a great idea. That's really cool that you want to do that. But you're going to give away half of what you make. You're not a wise loan. And so they wouldn't give me the money. And I was like, all right, I'm going to have to do this on my own. So then what I did was for the next four years, almost four years, I would spend half of my time in California working on my father's road construction company, operating some huge piece of heavy machinery. So if you're... You were in California during those four years. I'm sure you you probably cussed me out as I was as I was slowing up your traffic. Okay. As soon as season was over with, I would then move back to Arizona. Or I, would, I would call all my friends in Arizona to find out who had a room that I could rent, and, and I would come back to Arizona and get a bar and I'd get a bartending job. And then as soon as you know season was ready to start back up in California for construction, I would leave my bartending job and go back to California. So I spent almost four years basically where. Everything I owned, I could fit in this one large duffel bag, uh -huh. you know, and remember my, my one big splurge each year was that when I would come back to Arizona, you know, most people that had a room to rent, if, if they didn't have a bed, I would just sleep on the floor. Like it didn't bother me. I had blankets. I would just sleep on the floor. But my one big splurge was each year I would buy myself a new pillow. So that was it. So for like <laughs> almost four years, it was like my big, my big spending was, was a new pillow each year just because I was like. I have to save this money, you know, like All right, I well, need well, to, as, as I can to, to get, you know, to give my, my passion, my dreams, to give it wings. You know? Absolutely. So I, I, yes. And, and now, you know, now we're here. So it's, right. it's, it's, been a, it's been a long journey, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. It's, right. it's made me appreciate everything. And, and I'm, I, I get to have a, a career where I get to help people. So it's right. like, I'm like, you, you can't beat it. It's, right. it's, I'm so fortunate. 
so how, what did you do? Did you speak to a business consultant or did you, I mean, I just, did you like speak to somebody and say, I'm, I'm trying to start this and I'll, I'll need X amount of money? I mean, that, that was a fascinating story. I, I picked the brains of a couple other apparel companies that I found online and just, you know, uh, Facebook was still pretty new and, you know, so I would hit up companies around town and be like, hey, and just ask them, you know, how they went about it and the things that they needed and then just kind of just went and did the math myself and just figured out, all right, you know, I need this amount of money for this. I need this amount of money for this. I need this amount of money for this. Excuse me. And then just, I'm like, all right, here's what I need. Now it's now it's time for me to just, you know, do the work and 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 save every every penny and every dime and then when I got that amount I was like, "All right, cool. Now I can now I can start it. I'm not rich, never will be. That's fine with me. As long as I can pay my bills and I get to do these amazing companies where every single day I get to help people. Like there's nothing better than that. And it's it's also funny when you you focus on like that that selfish aspect and I try and tell people this, but they don't understand it that even though I'm helping people, there's still a lot of selfishness in, involved because, but it's not about money, it's, it's about that feeling that you get from helping people without asking for anything in return. Well, yes, because and and I think it just takes, uh, it, you know, and, and uh, it, it, it's amazing how much I really love what I do and thank God for it because uh, like you just said about the people that when you were bartending and people and I work this, that, yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, uh, I work sometimes 60, 70 hours a week between the TV show. I just finished a children's book, or I should say I will finish a children's book in a few weeks. And also my job at the university and I teach, which I love teaching as well. So uh, I am not complaining about putting in time <laughs> at a job <laughs> because I, I like what I do. So yes, in that respect. I just try and get across to people. It's like, find, some, find something that you love to love do. Love to do, yes. I, monetize it so you can get by you know it's like I mean I, I could have any job that I want working for a corporation and be making a lot of money right now but that I wouldn't be happy you know that's that's not where my happiness comes from I know what makes me happiest and it has nothing to do with money so as long as I can make enough to pay my bills to feed myself to take care of my dog that's that that's it you know like everything else is is extra like I don't if you're if you're living your life where you're trying to make as much as you can you're never going to be happy because you're never going to have enough money if you're if you're working just to make money so much of the time the work is is overlooked and and it's just the money factor and therefore you don't really enjoy what you're doing so that's what i love so much about being a career counselor and helping people with careers and i think it's very important because it's also a, an indicator of who we are it's so much of our identity so, um, you know, it really is important. Another thing though, I wanted to ask uh, just quickly and, and actually um, uh, when you started your um, company and you uh, decided to employ people that, uh, you know, were disabled or had special needs, did you go to various organizations or did you go to nonprofits? And yes, is that how you started that system? Yeah, there's there's an amazing facility here in Tempe, Arizona called called the Centers for Habilitation, and so they they just have amazing programs where they work with you know such a wide range of you know either developmental delays or you know they run the gambit on people that that they help with special needs and I, I had contacted them and came by and took a tour of their facility and met some of their some of the, the members that go there and I was like, yes, this is it, you know? And so we go there, sometimes we trade off because we'll go, we'll go and we'll hire their, you know, their workers and their members to fold and package our shirts. But every once in a while, there's this really amazing uh, school here in Scottsdale, Arizona called Beyond Autism. And it's a very small school and it was actually just started by a couple of parents who had children with autism, but they just didn't feel like the schools were teaching their children in the manner that they learn best. You know, one of the one of the big struggles in the autism community is that, you know, they always say if you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. Like you can't you can't label them all. There there's the the spectrum of autism is so wide and their, you know, their their brains are all wired very differently. So just because one individual with autism learns one certain way doesn't mean that way is the best way for the other child with autism and so what they did was these parents then started their own nonprofit school 
and now each student learns in the way that's best for that student. Wow, and that so, is great. It's so amazing. And so what we'll do, like a lot of times, let's say if we're teaming up with a, an autism-specific cause, I will call the school and we'll actually bring the shirts down there and we'll actually hire hire these students with with autism to fold and package the shirts. And so they get they get a paycheck, you know, a little paycheck, but they get job training and they uh -huh. get learn about responsibility. So it's so once they, you know, get out of school and get out of high school and if they go to college or whatever. So they've had a little bit of, you know, even at a small level, that responsibility and tasks and learning how to complete something and then that they can get a paycheck. You know, they'll they'll see the value in work and what comes from it. And so it's it's just a training, you know, uh, situation for them. But they're still they're, they're earning a paycheck and we get to, you know, see them, you know, and these all their students at the school. I think they have they only have like nine or ten students, but all of them now it's like I've got such a strong connection with all of them where it's like we, we actually just recently last month, uh, US Bank contacted us wanting to film a commercial about what we do and so I got I got them to bring a couple of their students with autism down to to a warehouse and US Bank for the commercial filmed these amazing kids you know folding and packaging our shirts when they're telling our story and so I wow. can't wait to get that and that comes out and just you know I can't even fathom again like how these how these kids with autism will feel seeing themselves in a national commercial you know That's I mean, great. That's gotta be just the coolest feeling in the world for them to you know, they're going to tell everybody they're a TV star, you know, <laughs> that's so cool for them to be able to do that. Like, oh, you know, just to tell people that they're a TV star and they've been in commercials, you know. Right, so uh, hey, I think that's cool for anybody to do. <laughs> so, yeah. I, again, I, I feel so fortunate to be able to do things like that, you know, for for these amazing, you know, kids. You know, it's right. just I'm, I'm, I truly feel that I just uh, I sit back and I'm like, how, how did this happen? Like, how did. You know, I, I really don't like the word luck because I really don't feel like luck is a real thing. Like, luck is merely taking advantage of an opportunity that's in front of you, you know, mm -hmm. and, and working your butt off. Like, the harder you work, the more lucky you get. So it's like, all of this is a byproduct of hard work, but I still have to sit back and be like, man, like, how did I, how did I get here? Like, it's, it's surreal for me to see, you know, like this shirt that I'm wearing right here, like, there's a, uh, a country musician who's a friend of mine named Stoney LaRue, and he has like 400,000 followers on, on Facebook alone, and he wears our shirt all the time, you know? And so Logan, the artist of this shirt, you know, like there was just recently uh, a video, uh, a lot of police stations have been like doing these lip sync videos. Uh -huh. And so one of them in Oklahoma did a lip sync video to a Stoney LaRue song, and in that video, he's wearing this shirt, and the last time I looked at the video, I think it was, it was creeping up on like 750,000 views, you know? So here's Logan getting to know that 750,000 people alone, you know, have seen this video with Stoney LaRue wearing his shirt. And that's, uh, to me, that's so surreal to think that that many people, you know, have seen Stoney wearing Logan's shirt. So that is great. It's, it's, it's a great thing you've done. I really, I really do appreciate it. And uh, I think so many other people do. You know, again, we spoke about Madeline Stewart. You know, she's a supermodel. Uh, uh, I, I love her T-shirt. Um, so you, you've got the whole nine yards there. You've got people with recognition putting shirts together. And, and people like me who are not famous can wear somebody, somebody, somebody's T-shirt that is famous, like Madeline's. On the other hand, you have um, uh, uh, the country and Western, what was what, what his name? Uh, uh, Logan. Stoney LaRue. Stoney LaRue. And Logan uh, is, is, is happy because Stoney LaRue is wearing his T-shirt. So you have, everybody comes together with Paper Clouds apparel. So it is a great thing. <laughs> We cannot thank you enough. It has been an absolute yeah. pleasure. I, I'm the one who needs to be thanking you. It's, it's a pleasure. Again, the way that I think about this, like I always tell people as well, you know, that I don't care if, if I get contacted by a newspaper in Topeka, Kansas, that has three people that read it. I'm going to take that interview and I'm going to give it like I'm talking to the New York Times, mm -hmm. you know, like. I tell people, I'm like, I don't care how many people see it. If only one person sees this video, that's still one more person that never would have known about my company beforehand. So it's like, I will always take any any opportunity I can to, to reach new people. So 
I am the one that is extremely thankful for this opportunity to be on your show and to reach more people.